Do you want to start doing paid diagnostic reviews or maybe you have started doing them, but you're not sure if you're checking all the right things? Do you wish you had a checklist? In this video, I am giving you a behind the scenes look at the exact checklist I use with every single client to perform paid diagnostic reviews. Hi, I'm Veronica Wasek, the unstoppable introvert and founder of 5-Minute Bookkeeping, and I help virtual bookkeepers just like you to become confident professionals and thriving business owners. I have been performing diagnostic reviews in QuickBooks for years. When I first started, I kept running into the same issues, messy books, missing information, old balances and undeposited funds, uncategorized income, uncategorized expenses. Sound familiar? I realized that if I wanted to consistently deliver value to my clients and avoid missing important details, I needed a system and a checklist. That is when I developed my diagnostic review checklist. It is the comprehensive tool that helps me find problems quickly, stay focused, and confidently present my findings to clients. Let me walk you through how I use it so you can feel confident knowing you're not missing a thing. Take a look at the paid diagnostic review checklist. I set up the checklist in Excel, and as you can see at the bottom, I have several different tabs for all of the areas that need to be reviewed. I'll go over some of them with you. Let's start with client information. So here's where we'll make note of the client's name, the period that we are reviewing, whether they're using accrual or cash accounting, how they're organized for tax purposes, and whether they're cash or accrual for tax purposes, whether they have a calendar or fiscal tax year, and we'll also look at the version of QuickBooks. Let's go to this tab. This is the reconciliation to the tax return balance sheet. In the U.S., it's called the Schedule L. This applies to S-corporations, partnerships, and C-corporations. So the goal here is to get a sense of whether the balance sheet in QuickBooks reconciles to the tax return balance sheet and whether a reconciliation needs to be performed. Many times what we see is that the tax preparer is keeping uh, separate books or doing adjustments to the books that are not really making it onto the client's QuickBooks. And it's very important for the balance sheet in QuickBooks to reconcile back to the balance sheet on the tax return if there is one. And so we have a step to follow here. It asks, does a reconciliation between QuickBooks Online and the tax return need to be performed? And then we have findings. So if we say no, everything's okay, and A, it's not applicable, or cleanup needed. So I'll select cleanup needed. So notice that based on what I selected for the findings, the recommendation changes, and now it says, perform a reconciliation of the QuickBooks Online balance sheet and the tax return schedule L. We also have a section here for additional recommendations as well as internal notes. So everything that I put down as a recommendation or additional recommendations will end up in my report of findings and recommendations, which is what I will present to the client. Then we have banking and we're listing all of the bank and credit card accounts and then checking for various things such as commingling, whether the bank feeds are connected, whether we have all transactions in the bank feeds. When the last bank statement reconciliation was done, we're looking for old and cleared transactions and a lot more. So then all of the findings that show up on this report and then any additional recommendations will then go on to the report of findings and recommendations. Hey, do me a favor and show your support for this channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing. And remember to tap that notification bell so you never miss an update. Then we have undeposited funds and we're checking for two areas in undeposited funds, the payments section and the QuickBooks payments section. And we're looking for balances that are old because most of the time untrained users don't know how to work with undeposited funds in QuickBooks. And then we see that they usually end up sometimes with even hundreds of transactions 
in undeposited funds that are not making their way out of the undeposited funds account. So I'll go ahead and say cleanup needed. And then you'll see that when I select cleanup needed, then for these columns, number of transactions from date to date and amount show up. So that indicates that we need to fill out these sections. So typically we want to give the client a sense of, okay, are we talking about two or three transactions or are we talking about 200 or 300 transactions? And so I like to let the client know the volume of transactions that we have found as well as the start and end date of when we found those old transactions as well as the total amount that we found. And then as you can see, because I selected cleanup needed here, now I have a recommendation that shows up to review and clean up old balances in undeposited funds. Let's take a look at the profit and loss. So we have a section for income, cost of goods sold, and expenses. And then again, our findings. What did we find? Everything's okay, not applicable, or cleanup needed. So for this review item, it asks, are there any negative or unusual balances in the income accounts? So let's say that, yes, we noticed some unusual things. So we selected cleanup needed. Then it wants to know, well, what is the account name or account category that we're seeing that has those unusual transactions? And again, number of transactions, the from date, the to date, the amount, and the recommendation. So in this case, the recommendation is to review and adjust negative balances. And then we have a section for internal comments, anything that we need to make a note of regarding what we found. Here's another example. Is there uncategorized income? Because there should be no transactions in uncategorized income. So we're going to say that we found some, so there is cleanup needed. So now we have the account category already filled out. And again, the details here, number of transactions, the date, the amount, and then we have a recommendation that also shows up. So based on whatever I put in cleanup needed in my checklist, I have saved myself many, many hours by hard coding in the recommendation. So in this case, the recommendation is to review uncategorized income and recategorize transactions to the correct account. I'll go over to accounts receivable and the review for accounts receivable and accounts payable is fairly similar. We're looking for old balances so for accounts receivable. We're looking for old uncollected customer balances greater than 90 days old. And again, if I put in cleanup needed, then prompt shows up and then we'll have a recommendation to show up as well. So we're looking for old balances over 90 days old, also old credit or negative customer balances, any customer balances with a zero balance as well. So as we work through the checklist and we're making note of all of the items that need cleanup, then we're really putting together the beginnings of our report of findings and recommendations, which I will cover in another video. But as you can see, this is very comprehensive, very organized, and I like the organization. I like the fact that I have a predictable and repeatable method for doing this, that I don't have to review a client's file every time and try to remember what to check for. I have a very organized, very methodical checklist that keeps me right on track, and I check for all kinds of things. Here's another for the chart of accounts. We're looking at the uh, number of account categories and is it reasonable? Is the chart of accounts reasonable for the company's industry? Sometimes clients have just a, a big mishmash of all sorts of accounts in their chart of accounts, which causes them to keep using the wrong account categories. We're looking at whether account types are used correctly or whether if they are using account numbers, are they using those correctly? Okay, and lastly, I'll take a look at sales tax. And we have some questions to answer, whether they collect sales tax, how frequently do they remit sales tax? Is it cash or accrual? Do they use the QBO sales tax center? And then we have the review questions to go through. Is the QBO sales tax center set up and being used properly? 
and our sales tax payments being recorded to the correct sales tax liability account. And finally, in my checklist, I even have a template. So if the client has additional areas that I need to review, then I have a template already set up where I can then add it to my checklist and then add the review items and just keep right on using the checklist. And there you have it. That is the diagnostic review checklist I rely on for every client. It keeps me on track, helps me uncover hidden issues, and shows my clients exactly what needs to be fixed. Of course, every business is a little different, so always consider your client's industry, the tools and apps that they're using, and how their QBO is set up. If you want to dive deeper, I will link my full course on how to perform a paid diagnostic review in QBO. It is packed with the step-by-step -step process that I follow, templates, checklists, and everything that you need to perform diagnostic reviews with confidence. I will link that for you in the description. And be sure to sign up for my free smart review checklist where I show you how I do a quick check of my client's books in just 15 minutes. Do you want to know more about the paid diagnostic review and the must check areas every bookkeeper should be reviewing? Be sure to watch this video where I go over the areas that I review in QuickBooks from start to finish. And if you're ready for a deep dive into diagnostic reviews, then check out my diagnostic review playlist. I'll see you next time.